We've all got mosquito bites, but itching may not be the worst thing you get from a mosquito this season. Caitlin Sanamo shares more coming up. How about those Red Raiders? Coming up, we'll have an inside look at the Texas Tech chain gang. But first... Raider! Shh, keep it down. Haven't you heard about all the local noise complaints? Sarah Scroggins shares more. Good afternoon, I'm Andrew Nepson. And I'm Corley Peel. Welcome to MCTV Weekday Update. Texas Tech's victory bells aren't the only thing making noise on campus this fall in Lubbock. MCTV reporter Sarah Scroggins investigates a recent spike in area noise complaints. The roof is one of Lubbock's newest hotspots, attracting patrons with drink specials, live DJs, and a spectacular view of Jones AT&T Stadium and the Lubbock skyline. However, roof employees are discovering that residents are not too fond of hearing the sounds of a live DJ at 1 o'clock in the morning. I would say that they're coming from like uh, neighbors or like um, people living in the residential neighborhood around the bar, mostly like behind the bar. Um, I don't know if it's coming from one individual um, particularly or it could be coming from like multiple sources, but as far as I know, it's just from the residents of the neighborhood behind the bar. Most of the residents living in 2520 are students. Williams figures they're probably not the ones complaining. And I wouldn't even see why there would be any kind of noise complaint because the kids never go to sleep there anyways. In the event of keeping the surrounding public happy, the roof has made some system changes. We have gotten um, quieter sound equipment ever since, um, I guess, our last complaint. We have gotten a new PA system that hasn't been quite as loud. And uh, since we've had that system, we haven't had any complaints. And uh, that's probably the major um, measure that we've taken. And then, I guess, um, probably just toned it down overall. Um, we really don't get as loud as we used to get. Like any bar, the roof has its occasional altercation. Because of that and an increase in customers, they have upped their security in general, but particularly during game days. We've increased um, our security staff over the past month, probably um, by 50%, I would say. We've implicated um, a small dress code, I guess. Um, after a certain time period, you can't wear like jerseys, which I guess would be gang related. The roof isn't the only bar close to campus that's had problems. Luxor Nightclub has had its fair share of problems, too. Keisha Anarobi's balcony at University Fountains overlooks the parking lot at Luxor. She said the first night she moved in, there was a fight and a shooting just a stone's throw away from her balcony. Then if a fight does occur, then you have, like, bottles being thrown or people be fighting here. Like, around this area right over here, we usually have, like, a lot of debris, but they're really good about cleaning it up after. And then um, I will say that before I did live here, when there was a shooting accident, um, the shooting kind of took right in place over there. This is Sarah Scroggins for MCTV. Hey, Andrew, what are you up to? Just casting my vote. For president? No, for American Idol. We've got more info about voting in this year's general election. Make sure you register to vote. With election day a little over a month away, organizations on campus are making a push to register students to vote in the presidential election on November 6th. So we're just trying to make sure that people get out there and vote. Texas Tech student Day 2 on Sin is a French national, but said it's important that people who are eligible to vote register. At least be registered. Like, if you don't know if you're going to vote, at least be registered so you have that option and that decision to make a choice. Students can easily obtain a voter's registration card from a number of student organizations outside the Student Union Building, and all they have to do is fill out this simple card. Student government teamed up with the Residence Hall Association to register and inform students about the upcoming election. The last day to register is Tuesday, October 9th. We have other voting drives that we're going to be hosting throughout Lubbock and throughout the campus until, um, until it's too late to vote. Dorothy Kennedy, the Lubbock County Elections Administrator, said students have the option to vote in Lubbock County or their home county via an absentee ballot. Do is complete this and there are deadlines, so you want to get on the website and review what the deadlines are. Students that decide to vote in Lubbock will be able to vote at any of the locations in Lubbock County, including the Student Union and the Rec Center on campus. Lubbock County was the first county in Texas to implement vote centers, meaning essentially there is no wrong place to vote. So there are 36 locations that you can pick to in addition to, you know, the sub, which will be very crowded on Election Day with our, our college students. Reporting for MCTV News, I'm Stacia Smith. Whether you like this fall cold snap or not, the recent dramatic change is bad news for area mosquitoes, which is good news for us. Caitlin Sanamo has a story. Terry Dickey says Sam Quinones was a healthy 78-year-old man. My mom's husband got, um, got sick, 
and was unable to stand up and walk. And the sickness got worse. That evening, he fell out of the bed. So she went ahead and called an ambulance, and they took him to the hospital. She could have never imagined the diagnosis. But it, it was confirmed as West Nile. West Nile virus has been spreading across the state at a rapid and surprising rate, causing not only scare among people, but research into why and how to stop it to begin. Dr. Steve Presley with the Institute of Environmental and Human Health is head of that research department and says weather and geographical conditions has caused the mosquito population to increase. Um, Culex tarsalis, the, our primary vector species here, it likes stagnant, highly polluted water like in a hoof print or an old tuna can or a, a soda can thrown out in the backyard. Uh, it, it's very effective in drought conditions. If it just gets a little water, it'll start reproducing. The Institute sets traps around Lubbock in areas just like that. Bi-weekly, researchers come out to sites just like this to collect mosquitoes to test them for West Nile. They take these traps, and bring the mosquitoes back to be tested. Back at the lab. But you can see just in size, right off the bat, there's a lot of variation. The bugs are euthanized and inspected for the virus. Researchers say they have found traces of the virus in all seven trap sites. Presley says there is no end in sight for the virus, but... An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And he gave these suggestions for prevention. Keep your grass mowed. Empty standing water out of your yard. Stay inside at dusk and dawn. If you do go outside during those times, wear long sleeves and pants. And most importantly, use deep bug spray. If you're itching to get rid of these pesky bugs, you won't have to wait long. Mosquito season ends in November. Whoa, Corley, how many chains do you have there? Two chains. And that makes three chains with the Texas Tech defense. Brad Cesack toughens up when he goes head-to-head -head with the Red Raider chain gang. I never thought I'd ever see a great defense at Tech. They are very exciting to watch. The defense is going off this year. Typically when people think of Texas Tech football, it's the offense that comes to mind. But this year, it's the defense that has everybody fired up. This Red Raider defense, nicknamed the Chain Gang, ranks as the top defensive unit in football, one spot ahead of defending national champ Alabama. To put that in perspective, last year's squad finished the season ranked 114th in the country. Linebacker Blake Dees thinks the changes on the coaching staff, led by new defensive coordinator Art Kaufman, have helped lead the Red Raiders to a 4-0 start. Well, I think it is this different just because of coaching-wise. And uh, we're a lot more comfortable now on the field because we know what to do. And the, the scheme we have is so easy now. I mean, I, yeah, I wouldn't say easy, but I mean, it's easier than last year's. And uh, we're just it's clicking a lot better than it did last year. Safety DJ Johnson said he came to Texas Tech with big ambitions. Well, no one came to Texas Tech to lose. We didn't come to Texas Tech to be the last ranked defense or to be the worst team or however you want to look at it, you know, depending on different opinions. We came here to win, and that's our goal as a team, as a unit, and every individual came here to, to make a statement to do something that Texas Tech hasn't done, and so we agree with that. Defensive coordinator Art Kaufman said he thinks depth throughout the defense has helped them to progress to where they are now. Uh, yeah, I think we are. You know, Michael always been a pleasant surprise for us as Sam, and I think that gives us two Sams. And, and to me, we've got two sets of linebackers now uh, at D-tackle with Starks coming along and, and uh, Dante Phillips. I mean, he's had a lot of snaps and able to give us a few snaps there. And uh, we've developed there. And then, you know, even you look at uh, Pete Robertson, you know, he's come along. So the depth it, from the end of spring ball to now has really come along, and I'm pleased with where we are. One thing the players are trying to do is stay humble throughout it all. And Dee said the coaching staff is helping them do that. Coach keeps it making us stay humble. You know, he keeps us coaching like he always does. And uh, we don't want to get a big head because we know what happened last year. And we, we would hate for that to happen again. So that's how we stay humble. I think that's what's hovering over our head just to make us stay humble. The Red Raiders are earning the toughest part of their schedule, which includes five straight games against top 25 opponents. But this will provide the defense the opportunity it needs to prove that it truly is a force to be reckoned with. Reporting from Jones AT&T Stadium, I'm Brad Cisak, MCTV News. Well, that's our broadcast. I'm Andrew Nepson. And I'm Corley Peel. Thanks for watching.